am down and oh my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while join us this morning and you can listen to our discussion on addiction and today we are going to focus on alcoholism now in our part of the world in the Caribbean you will recognize that alcohol is, is an e illegal drug in fact in, in the, the whole world is legal but what happens is that many of us see it as something that we can just use and continue to enjoy our lives and for some people they see it as their happiness but we all know from, from those of us from the treatment side, we are very conscious that alcohol really is a substance which when abused can lead to very dangerous you know, effects and, and an impact on family and community and someone's job. What we want to talk today about is the whole concept of alcoholism and we are going to explore certain questions and for those of you who may be either drinking a little too much or maybe your relatives at home and you're looking at this program, we want to recognize or, or differentiate between the signs of what might be alcoholism and what may not be. And on the set today, I have two of my guests whom you've met before, Sati Muraj Hello. and um, Mr. Ramdas Pro, he would like to be called. And we're going to explore these questions and of course they're going to identify with it in their own lives because they are now in recovery and helping a lot of other people at the same time, it is important for them to discuss their experiences and explain how, do you, how can you tell if you are an alcoholic or maybe someone close to you is an alcoholic. So welcome to our yeah. program again. Good morning. Good Thanks to be for having here. us here. Great. Good to have yeah. both of you. Yeah. And so we're going to go straight into the program. And the first thing I want to ask is, when you were drinking, did you on your own feel you had the need to cut down on your drinking? Yes, for me, right? When I noticed that what was happening in my life as a, as a mother um, and my children were, were getting the pangs of, of my drinking, were feeling the hurts of my drinking, I started to realize that I am in trouble, especially when I have to take a drink in the morning I didn't think that was normal. I started to think that is not social, definitely not social. And I have to drink at any time that I feel for it. You so know? you started to get that sense that this is not, something is wrong here because something. I am now totally dependent on this, this drinking. Yeah. Was that the same for you, bro? Well, I was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in my drinking, um, in my drinking coming up before, before the end, I always feel that the fella who not drinking didn't know what happiness was. Mm -hmm. I thought you, um, you had to drink to enjoy yourself. So for you, alcohol was equivalent to happiness? To happiness, I, I tell myself in order to enjoy going at chutney singing or some little calypso tent, you had to drink rum but until it get out of hand, until I, um, I couldn't handle it again. But what do you, when you say out of hand, what do you consider to When be I say out of hand, I started to disrespect the neighborhood. And I started to be abusive home, right? And then my boss started to tell me that I's a good fella only when I not drink. And he started to send me back home. Right? So then that's how I said. So I get to realize you. then that my alcoholism causing problem. But when people criticized you for drinking, 
How did you react? Well, when people tell me, whenever people tell me about my drinking, I always feel they interfere with my life. Because I say I buy my own rum. I didn't ask you to buy rum for me, or I didn't want no drink from you. I buy my rum, so you interfere with my happiness. Mm. So in other words, you're minding your business. Yeah, minding my business. My wife tell me um, once or twice that the children gain big now, and I should stop drinking. And how did you react And to that? I pay no attention to that. Mm -hmm. Because I told her that I, I let go football and cricket and, and all them sports, and I only hold on to drinking now. Right? Okay, so you were justifying it and, and I was trying to justify, I was trying to 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 bar the alcoholism then. Mm -hmm. Right? To let she know that it's okay if I take a drink at because the Because you end. have cut off all other sports. I take a level sport. So you saw alcoholism I drinking alcohol as a sport. At that time I tell myself that is my only sport. But mm -hmm. after I stopped drinking and I look at the back of the papers, I didn't see drinking there. Mm -hmm. I see all kinds of sports at the back of the papers, me I see drinking. Mm -hmm. So I was fooling myself automatically, I was fooling myself. What about you, Sati? Yeah, and for me, it's a little bit different because I, what they call this type of drinking is closet drinking. I drink at home. I will hang out with my friend, with my next door neighbor. You know, she was my drinking partner at that time. And I thought she wanted me to be happy and not my mom. Because when my mom talked to me and told me, how you drinking like that, you know, take a little less than that, or take care of the children, forget about Lyman. I said, I really thought deep down in my heart that my mom didn't want me to be happy. I thought she wanted to take my little happiness from me, which was drinking. So it's very interesting that both of you looked at drinking alcohol as, as um, keeping in a seed of happiness. Yeah. Well, most of the drinkers, now that I stop, I've got to realize, most of the drinkers, you see, what I tend to believe that um, alcohol has corned the individual. So you get a kind of false sense of, For, of things. Uh, false pride. And it does baffle you too. It makes you feel everything okay. So you're, you're living yeah. a seed of denial. Denial. Yeah, in your own it's world. The correct word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the but correct did you word. feel guilty at any point in time? Well, there is times when I come home and um, my wife says that um, the children need books or they need things and I, I didn't have the money. I drank all the money. Mm -hmm. And then you see, I, I reached a stage where I couldn't take one drink and stop. Or maybe take a PQ or nip whatsoever with the boys and leave and go home. I did reach a stage of more I drink, more I wanted to drink. I had to drink until the money finished. So that's where the disease became progressively yeah. worse. Well, uh, yeah, it's progressed. And it progressed, always keep on progressing in your life for the worse. For the worse. If you start off drinking one drink, one drink, one drink, it will progress to two drink and three drink and drinking a nip or drinking a couple of beers. And it always keep on progressing and it progressed for the worse. It, and it, all that time, it have you thinking and it have you feeling that everything is okay. You could control it. You could drink when you want and stop when you want. And you could you could take two so beers. You always felt that you were in control. Yeah. Could I identify with that? Yeah. I I love that word guilt. You know, you always feel guilty. And the feelings, the emotions of guiltiness carry you back to drink. Because you need to get high to forget that you're guilty. You understand? That's like that. very interesting. Yeah. So any emotions that come up which and that was your conscience of the body you. Right. Because when you're feeling guilty, it's because your conscience is of bothering you. Of course. So and reality, you... reality hits. So you need to get high to forget about reality, you know, especially when the children need stuff. I'm a mother, and when Monday, Sunday evening, maybe 10 o'clock in the night, 11 o'clock, I'm now thinking about children's uniform for the next day. So in that in itself will tell me, what happened, Gil? You, how, how you, you know, why, why you couldn't do it earlier? But then I'll take a drink to forget that it's 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock in the night. So I'll continue to do whatever I had to do. And I thought, I really thought that that was the way. You know, I thought that was the way. And I thought that is how to be a, a good mother. Because everybody had to listen to you at that point in time. Okay, you know? because you, you're still, in your mind, you're still in charge. Yeah. Definitely. So when you would check for the uniform, is it that the children would have probably put things in place for themselves at that point? 
Well, they were small, but they will put uh, things in place up to a point. But they, they wash the uniform, spin dry it, hang it out, you know, get things ready, you know. And we, ha we had everything. Everything was there. The fridge always had food. Everything was there. We had a complete house. We, you know, they had the, the, the um, uniforms and things, but it wasn't in place. So in other words, you, you know? didn't exercise care and your GP to make sure it, it is made ready. Exactly. For, for the Monday morning. Exactly. And especially they have projects and homework and things. They have to do that part on their own. Yeah, I never went with them to sit down and do it and help them, you know. That's what most parents yeah. would do. Yeah, most parents. Did, did you experience that too? Most of, the care, most of the care at that time, let's go to your drinking friends. Most of my care and most of my attention went to my drinking friends. Uh, I, I, used to, I used to look forward for my friends more than my family. And I, was it the friends or was it because you were drinking? Well, at that time, I, I... You thought they were friends? I thought they were friends. At that time, I, I highly consider them, and I, I don't want to be um, with all them. I prefer to be with them than with my family. And all because you time. felt that they, yeah. you're happy yeah. drinking with them. And then I don't want to miss out on the drinking line. But when you yeah. were like in the, before the disease progressed, yeah. did you consider yourself a normal drinker, a social drinker? Well, at, 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 that, at, that, at that beginning stage, right, uh, my, my early stage, my mother used to give away a drink, you know, Christmas time. My mother used to give all she children a little shot, and she said, I pretty well. And bigger we get, right, is a bigger shot she had to give away. Mm. And then, then the, the worm started to grow too. Mm. So to satisfy that worm, and then, and then the time bigger you get, the worm turn to a snake, <laughs> right? And you had to give him big dose now. Yeah. So, that's so again, it keep on progressing, in other words. Yeah. The alcohol keep on progressing mm -hmm. until it reaches the stage where you can't control again, where you need the morning drink. So going back to that though, did you yeah. at, at early stages see yourself as a normal drinker? Yeah, definitely. I, I always see myself you know, fitting in with everybody. Well, the reason why I drink is when I got married. In my home, I was never introduced to alcohol until I get married into this family where alcohol, everybody drinks. Yeah. You understand? So, so was I was a normal, a a normal, normal part thing, of the yeah. day. On the weekends, everybody drink, they dance, they enjoy themselves. So I was seeing a sense of happiness there coming out, you know. So I tell myself I'll try it, you know, and see how that goes. It didn't go too well, <laughs> you know, it didn't go well at all. You see, at the beginning, yes, it's normal. You even feel normal while it is abnormal, yeah. right? In other words, for the non-drinker, it is abnormal, but for the no. drinker, yeah. it was no. normal. No. Yes, yeah. Well, like, like, one, I started to think about I used to hide my drink. Why am I hiding my drinks? That was a question I asked myself way down in my drink. Was it deep inside that you knew it was wrong, it was progressing, it's getting worse? But I was baffled. Why am I hiding my drinks, my own drink, in my own house, from my own self? <laughs> and that was baffling yeah. for me, right? Because yeah. I would put it behind the fridge or in the clothes basket or behind the rice bucket, or, yeah. you know, change my places. Yeah. Who am I fooling? And yeah. there's where the question arise for me. Is this normal, or is this madness? Or why am I doing this? And, and I couldn't answer myself. Because you are a closet drinker. Exactly, I couldn't answer yeah. myself So when you say closet drinking, is you have to hide it. Yeah. yeah. Just in case somebody came and, and, yeah. and see it. And if they sing it often enough, they're going to tell you, well, tell yeah. you your drinking problem. Yeah. Exactly. So it was more or less making sure that you kept this deep, dark secret yeah. in the closet. Yeah. yeah. You had any? Yeah. Well, I, I say um, when you reach that stage, uh, hiding drinks and drinking by yourself, lone drinking, drinking by yourself, and um, taking big extra, extra size of drink, a big drink, 
is, is um, a bad stage in alcoholism. You reach a bad stage. You I should, like that information. You should, yeah. you should at that stage do something about your drinking. So once you're taking yeah. very large drinks. Yeah. Or, or you when start you hiding drinks. Or otherwise that, that you um, forget. You start to forget. You start to forget. Or also Right? You start you start lost in memory. But right? also isn't part of it where you are finding every excuse yeah. to drink. Yeah. Because, for example, if you don't want people well, to, at that figure, stage, yeah. to figure out if you're drinking plenty, yeah. you organize a lot of limes and you always yeah. want to go somewhere and yeah. somebody bar, and, but it's a legitimate, yeah. normalized behavior. Yeah. Mm. So you find normal things to yeah. get involved in and bring people along so yeah. they too can drink so you can hide in that crowd. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Well, at that stage, at that stage, you're looking to get center of attraction and you're staying always front of the aisle. Alcohol. Now, if you plan any line or any little, any little picnic or or, or or going out, going out by the beach or anyway, alcohol is first. Or even going second. to a wedding. Anyway, the trunk always um well packed. Right? That's the first thing you pack. First in. thing is alcohol. Yeah. And alcohol now became the first priority in your life. That was somebody, the center of your life. Is, yeah. as you say, if somebody born, you look at the drink rum. If somebody die, you look at the drink rum. Mm -hmm. If somebody coming from away, you drink in for that. If somebody going away, you drink in for that. So you drink in for everything. And if somebody even sick, you say, yeah. well, you're, you're worried, yeah. so you drink in. You drink for that. Every if the if the goat make young one, you take a drink for that. <laughs> if the so, dog catch out, you take a drink for that. Yeah. So the, the so alcohol you, therefore yeah. find every reason. Every reason to take a to drink. drink. When you so that, if a person's they, finding that is happening to them, yeah. they need to be to check themselves. They need to check yeah. themselves. You need to do something. And then by that stage, people will start telling you about your alcoholism. I know it's interesting that we talk about this topic now because yeah. we are coming up close to Christmas. Christmas. And it's a very dangerous time. It's a time when people will, will be introduced, the kids especially, yeah. will be introduced to alcohol, alcohol for the first time in their life. Yeah. Then those who are drinkers yeah. will find their disease becoming more progressively yeah. worse yeah. during the season when yeah. there's every opportunity yeah. to drink. And then the non and then the non drinkers will be influenced also, and then anybody who you go by at this Christmas season, alcohol is always present. You always feel like yeah. you cannot have a lime without the alcohol. Or some event without no matter alcohol. how nice dish or how expensive um, dish you might prepare, and if they have alcohol on the table, they wouldn't want to appreciate it. Alcohol have to be present. So do you remember yeah. times when maybe you had blackouts when you you would have. Started to drink and then suddenly you don't remember anything until yeah. the next day. I had many many blackouts in my um, drinking career. I drink for fourteen years, and I, in my last so five. So wait wait wait, a drinking career. Yeah. You had a career in drinking. Yeah. For okay. fourteen, it lasts me fourteen years. <laughs> That's interesting. <Yeah. laughs> interesting. Fourteen years and um. And my last five years, every time alcohol presented itself to me, I was ready to drink. I didn't have to say, well, I only drinking on weekend, or I'm not drinking on this, or I'm drinking for that. Every time, night or day, for that last five years, I was ready to drink. And Christmas season, as you was mentioning, Christmas was a very, very bad time. I know seen it was a very bad time. I, I wouldn't even buy toys for my children, or I buy an alcohol. I remember buying all different blends. And um, I had two children at that time. And I, I look, they have a little beetle. There's a, there's a squeeze it and you go tick tack, tick tack. I buy that for my children to play. Cheapest and, story. And that was 25 cents. Mm. Yeah, that was 25 cents. I buy in room for work and I eat nine, ten dollars a bottle of drink. But then those are for us plenty money. That was plenty money. So we don't want a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, we long say long eat time. nine, ten dollars, yeah. it's a long time ago. Yeah. So, so in terms of your blackout, what are some of the things you were told about your blackout? Well, that, now that I, um, I stop drinking, I get to realize that in my blackout, I did plenty of wrong things. One for sure is that I beat my wife. I reached the stage of beating my wife. And the next day, when, I, when I'm, the alcohol wear off, and she will tell me what I do, and what happened, what, how I get on, I, I would say, no, I didn't do that. You say she was lying. I didn't do that, yeah. And now that I stopped drinking for this period of time, um, I get to hear about people who went on that blackout and serving time in prison, you know, under that blackout for crime that they commit and they don't know of. Mm -hmm. I just want to remind yeah. viewers that blackout doesn't mean you say you're unconscious. What yeah. blackout means is that you are 
acting normal, normal. according to what people might say. Yeah. But you don't remember. So you could yeah. have knocked down somebody, yeah. Yeah. you could have killed somebody, as you say, yeah. you beat your wife, yes, and you just don't remember. Yeah. You sometimes people say, well, you know, I got home and I don't even know yeah. how I got home because they had a blackout. Yeah. And they, yeah. this is where the alcohol became so yeah. much that the brain was not able to function yeah. properly. It's a, it's a very bad stage to reach an alcoholism, the blackout stage. And the blackout, as he was mentioning, is not, um, it's not like if current cut off. Or if somebody take a piece of wood and hit you on the head. It's, that's not the blackout. The, as you say just now, is you're walking, talking, you're driving, you're eating, you're conversing with, with somebody else, and the next day you don't know nothing about it. That's where the... That is dangerous. That is where yeah. up here shut down on you. I remember, I remember a time we went to the beach and we drank as normal first thing. The children paid. I was not aware because I wasn't paying attention to them. And when we were coming back home, all I remember is that we leave the beach. And I remember next morning, 10 o'clock, waking up on the cushion. And I couldn't understand. And I was the driver. Mm -hmm. I was the driver of that car, bringing home my little kids. They were in the back seat. And when I get up and I look, I saw them in one room one room in the house, and when I opened the door, they all were together on one bed, sleeping together. And when they woke up, I had to learn. They told me, Mommy, I don't want to go back no way with you again. We could have dead, we could have died last night. Accident, we could have killed innocent people. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't remember how I reached home, how I drive from Manzalina the last two months. Yeah. I couldn't remember that. I can't even remember that even now in my recovery. That's interesting. Yeah, the children get big and I can't remember. So when they told you that that day, how did you feel? I thought they were lying. I said them they just don't want me to have a good time. You know, because I because I as a mother, they want me to always be strict and follow their rules. And that was the excuses and all the, you know, all the excuses that I could ever come up with. So you actually started to resent them. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes when I, when I go, when every time I say we're we going on a picnic, we're going on a family outing, they will say, no, you go ahead. And I sit think they hate me. Mm -hmm. I sit think they always hate me. Because they don't want you to have a good time. Yeah, exactly. So your mother hated you yeah. in your mind. Your kids hated you yeah. because they all stand in your way of your drinking. Yeah. Did you think your family hated you? Well, my my wife um, had real, real hate for me and my my, my ending up of my drinking. At that stage, she used to leave leave almost every week, you know. I had to go by my mother-in-law and cry um, when I sober up or two or two days or three days after, and go by my mother-in-law and cry for um, a last chance. There, there was always a last chance. Yeah. No more last chance. My mother-in-law gave me. Plenty last chance, but I will tell us as, we, as we, the topic was on um, blackout. Um, you just wake up the next day with a remorse feeling. Yeah, I wanted to find out how that feels right. the next day. Mm. You just wake up the next day with that remorse feeling, and the remorse feeling is getting up, knowing in a fear, you're trying to wonder now what went on, who drive the cars that you were saying, yeah. who drive the car to bring you home. Because you can't remember coming home with the car. You're, you're trying to remember now what you tell your neighbor, if you cross your neighbor, or if the police pass in front of the road at that time, you always feel they're coming for you. Because you, can't, you feel that you did something wrong, and you know, you have that remorse, you're always feeling you, you're in a fear then. Because you don't know what went on. You're walking around the car to see if you, if you bounce it or if you scratch it, or all them things. You're watching the gate to see if you bounce the gate. And all them kind of things, yeah, that, that is um, your remorse feeling in the morning when you wake so, up. So, for so many years you went through yeah. those feelings of My last five years guilt and fear yeah. and anxiety. My last five years, yeah. I am. Um, I just get to love alcohol so much. So much. And um, if, if I go leaving to go to work on a Friday, sometimes my wife will tell me that um, don't drink today. 
But time. she knew that on Friday you were going to Come home with the salary. Come home with the pay. That we have to carry the children to the doctor, or we have to buy something, or we have to do something with the money. Right? And um, you know I have all good intention that they come home with the money. I have up here, I have good intention to come so home. So on the rational yeah. side of your brain, yeah. I am going to come home with this money and yeah. listen to this lady today. I'm listening to my wife. But then the disease takes over when the money hits From charge. the time that money reaches my hand, right, I say what? I'm going to take one drink or one beer and I'm going to do so it. So you had good intentions. Yes, yeah. I'm going to take one. But for the alcoholic, one, one is too many and 20 not enough. From the time you take that one drink, 20 drink ain't enough. So after yeah. you take that one drink, all yeah. reason would have yeah. thrown away. All, all what wives say and who say and think, all that gone down the drain. Because now the disease is in yeah. control. Yeah. You start to satisfy that crave. You can identify with that? Sir? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, for instance, I will have all intentions that when I drop the kids to school, I will come back home, I will do wash, I will clean, I will cook lunch. And when they come home from school, they will get nice lunch to eat, you know, and everything normal. My mom will ask me to take her to the grocery store. That and all will fit in in my busy schedule. And I say, I will take care of that as well. And the minute I drop them to school, I will come. I've never been to a bar, eh? and I'm an alcoholic. I never been to a bar. So I will stop by the first grocery and I'll pick up a six pack Guinness and I will come go home and I say, well, put that in the fridge to cold. And later on, when I finish all my work, I will do it. And the first thing as I reach home, some little thought, like the word of suddenly will come. Just take one. And that's it. And as I take that Guinness, everything else fall mm -hmm. on the wayside. Because you, you have activated your disease and it takes, yeah. it, it takes control. Yeah. They, they call that the reviver. <laughs> the reviver. You see, I want that drink now to set it back, you know. It have people who can, can sign the name if they take that money drink, you know. Because of the shakes. Yeah. yeah. And in yeah. our second, we're doing yeah. two parts of this program. Yeah. So in our part two, I want to deal a little bit also about the physical aspect All right. of alcoholism. Yeah. And of course, I know there's much more to explore in discussing it too. So far, we look at, at the idea that, you know, for some, when you now start alcohol, you think it's normal to drink. Yeah. When people give you feedback or they complain or they criticize, you take it personal and think yeah. they're standing in the way of your happiness. Yeah. You, we talked about blackouts, and blackouts and that doesn't mean that we are unconscious. Mm. It simply means that you will do things, people looking at you think you're doing normal stuff, yeah. Yeah. but you just don't remember the Dream. next day. Yeah. And then, of course, we looked at the whole idea of how it alters our thinking. So that somebody like Pooh, for example, yeah. a normal, nice, affable yeah. gentleman, yeah. every time you drink and you come home yeah. drunk, you're going to engage in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to our viewers who have been looking on, we, have been, we are discussing and exploring alcoholism. And we're going to have part two of this program where we, we are going to also go into some further aspects of yeah. it. But as you would have seen by, by now, alcohol really is not something we should be playing games with. It is very, a very dangerous drink. And if you realize that you cannot handle it, then you should just leave it. Once you see the disease is progressing, where you would have started with one drink or one beer or something, and you realize you need much more than that, yeah. then it means that you should not drink at all. Yeah. So I really hope today this program would have been useful for you. And keep viewing. We're going to have part two of this program where we're going to further explore alcoholism yeah. and where you should ask yourself the question, am I an alcoholic? So thank you. Have a great week. And may God bless you. And oh, my soul so weary When troubles come And my heart burdened be Then I am I want to explore the whole impact on yeah. that. And if it